back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat. Hi guys! So I'm here today to do a book review and it's my first book review for the hashtag SFFMistressWorks series that I'm doing which is basically in aid of reading all of the science fiction and fantasy masterworks published by Glantz which are written by women. So the first book I read for that is Ursula Le Guin's The Dispossessed. I wanted to read this because I already owned this one, I bought it myself and I bought it because I read The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula Le Guin and I loved it and I wanted to read more of her stuff and I know she's got quite a few books out so this was the next one I was told to try and I did and I loved it. Like look how many tabs there are, I loved it. It was great. This story follows two different civilizations. We follow the people of Anares and the people of Urus. These are two planets that kind of orbit each other, so the other planet is like the moon of the planet you're on, if that makes sense. And we follow a, a physicist from the planet of Anares, and he is called Shevek. And Shevek is our main character throughout the book, but we do kind of interact with other characters as the story goes on and see different people from Urus and different other tribes of aliens. It's a really interesting look at social clashes. That's the thing I think I took away from this book more than anything. What we have on Anares is a really interesting thought experiment. The idea and the themes of Anares as a planet is that no one from other planets is allowed to come there because their planet is something new, it's something revolutionary, it's all about equality, it's about not bringing any possessions with you, not owning and being selfish, it's about equality. Everyone pitches in, everyone gets something back. There is no hunger or starvation that everyone doesn't suffer. People in this world put in the time and effort, they get things back. It's no hierarchy of this is the top, this is the middle class and this is the lower class. Everyone is supposedly equal. So that's the really interesting concept of their planet. Equality and working the menial jobs alongside the high ranking jobs doesn't really lend itself to creativity as well as it could because you are constantly knackered, you are constantly with people who may be of various different intellects, um, some may not be as good as yours. So Shevek eventually gets to the point where he decides he needs to leave the planet in order to think about his theory. Basically he's trying to come up with a way to instantly communicate across um, star systems and stuff. So he goes and he travels to Urus, which is the closest planet to him and very, very different. Urus is a lot more like Earth in terms of the hierarchy and the structure. It definitely has political power, it has people being manipulative and working for money, it has a social structure. So him going there is a complete culture shock. Everything that he thinks he knows is backwards for this planet. And he meets some really interesting people there who try and manipulate and influence him towards working for them or helping them or basically controlling and regimenting his own ideas. So he has to fight against that whilst being kind of oblivious to the fact that it's happening. On Anares everyone trusts each other, everyone is fair and equal, supposedly, and it's a very different world when he goes to Urus. So the concept is instantly fascinating of these two moons, these two kind of quite close but not close enough planets and the fact that they're very very separated even though they trade with each other no one actually gets into the planet from the other one until Shevek. Alongside this we also get a look at some of the other alien races in this series later on so the Hainish which is what this book is part of it's called the Hainish cycle. The Hainish aliens do come in later on we also get a look at the people from Terra which is basically Earth um, so there are other races that kind of come into it but they don't come in until the second half the story itself is told in two parts, so we have the present day storyline which is Shevek going to Urus and following his adventure there, him trying to unveil what's happening, kind of discover where his interests lie, what he should be doing to focus on this theory and how he fits into Urus society which he really doesn't. And then we also have the backstory to this. We see how Shevek grew up in the society of Anares, we see how he met his partner, we see the way that they developed their friendship and their love, we see the way that he and various other people that he met started to think maybe there was something more going on and maybe equality 
and fairness wasn't quite running the planet the way that it should be. Maybe there were some corrupt people going on there. So there's a lot of backstory that leads up to his decision to leave the planet and we're being told the two stories in tandem. So every time you get a bit more of the present day storyline, you then go back and get a bit more of the past. And I think that worked really well because the second half of the book where things really start coming together was fascinating and particularly the last few sections of the backstory I loved. There were some great, great moments within there and I just thought they were fantastic. As you can see I have tabbed a lot. So the book starts out really interesting. The first sentence is there was a wall. It did not look important. It was built of uncut rocks roughly mortared. An adult could look right over it and a child could even climb it. Where it crossed the roadway instead of having a gate it degenerated into mere geometry. A line, an idea of a boundary. But the idea was real. It was important. For seven generations there had been nothing in the world more important than the wall and this definitely comes into play later on. One of the moments that I really liked is kind of seeing how Shavek has to adjust to the society that he's entering and he doesn't really understand the way that things are there. So this is one of the things he says to the Urus people when he first gets there. Your world is very beautiful. While I must stay inside will you give me books? Why yes sir, what sort? History, pictures, stories, anything. Maybe they should be books for children. You see, I know very little. We learn about Urus, but mostly about Odo's times. Before that was eight and one half thousand years. And since then, the settlement of Anares is a century and a half. Since the last ship brought the settlers, ignorance. We ignored you, you ignored us. You are our history, and we are perhaps your future. I want to learn not to ignore. It's the reason I came. We must know each other. We are not primitive men. Our morality is no longer tribal. It cannot be. Such ignorance is a wrong from which wrong will arise. So I come to learn. And I just think that's a really fantastic way to view going into an entirely different culture and meeting people from different cultures and very relevant to our current situation in the world with people not tolerating or accepting or being forgiving and kind to people who are different from them. I have feelings. <laughs> I just think Le Guin is so current, like she doesn't know it, but she was writing about stuff that's gonna resonate for years and centuries. Like she covers so many themes in her books that are so, so relevant to today and will continue to be relevant until equality and fairness really becomes a reality. And judging from how it goes in this book, I don't know if it will ever happen in a way that is sustainable, but it's very interesting to ponder. I don't want to read any more from my little snippets just because I don't want to spoil it for you but I think this book is fantastic and will really challenge you but also will be a great story. If you like the sound of that and you like challenging fun ideas then I think you're really going to enjoy Le Guin. As I say I've read The Left Hand of Darkness before which is part of the Hainish cycle but you can start with either of them. They don't really link too much, um, in fact they barely link at all and the basic premise is that they're just kind of in the same solar system or universe so some of the aliens you see in one might be the same race that you see in another but there's really not a lot of crossover at all and each story stands completely on its own, it does not need context to be read. So I would certainly, certainly recommend you try this one out. You can definitely start with this one. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I just thought it was brilliant. Even though it was written in 1974, it's so current and fresh and modern and exciting. Go and check this one out if you've not read it before. If you have read it or you've read any other Le Guin, let me know your thoughts on her below because I'd love to talk about her and discuss her ideas. If you want to know spoilery thoughts for this, I do have a buddy reading group where I review and talk about all of my thoughts as I go along for all of the SFF Mistress Works books, so I'll link that down below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book Then come back and chat with me again